Hi, everybody. It's September 27th, Sunday morning. We have a very important breaking it down session with Chris Moore, our fire behavior analyst, because it's a red flag warning today, and we are all very concerned about those folks in the Ruth Valley who have not evacuated. And today is a day to take things very, very seriously. And Chris Moore, who's a specialist, and he's, he knows how this all works. He can tell you what the fire is going to do. Chris, why should folks leave Ruth today, especially today? So fire behavior is dictated by three things, the fuels, weather, and topography. And what we have today is a red flag warning, which means that we have very hot temperatures, low relative humidities, and high winds coming out of the northeast. Those are all things that make fire burn quite rapidly. We have extremely dry fuels in the uh, whole fire area, but especially in this north zone where we're looking at now. And then what we need is a topographical alignment. And so what is going to happen with the wind today, it's going to come from the northeast strongly down towards Ruth and across the fire area, up and over South Fork Mountain. And most of the times, fire likes to burn more rapidly uphill. But in this case, the winds will come up over South Fork Mountain and accelerate as it goes downhill towards the Ruth Valley. So the firefighters have been in here the last couple of days trying to secure as much of this line above Ruth as they can, because we knew this event was coming. But in the chance that the fire gets get over the line that we have established and gets into new fuels, it has the alignment of fuels, weather, and topography. And then once it gets from the mid slopes down into the drainage bottom, it goes from timber to grass and brush, which burn much faster and much more uh, extremely than the timber. So the concern here is that the fire has the potential to jump the line, get into new fuels, and then rapidly burn downhill into the Ruth Valley and then up towards the other side. So this isn't 100% guarantee. It's something that we've been highlighting for the last couple of days as potential here in the, the area. The potential is so severe is that our camp over here in Hentenshaw has been put on alert as well, and they've been going over what they would do in case fire does get out of our current containment lines here. So there is definitely heightened awareness for this Ruth Valley with the potential for things to line up to be a big growth day in the area today. Great. Thanks, Chris. And this is where neighbors helping neighbors is really key, right? The, the sheriffs have put Ruth under evacuation for days, and folks get comfortable staying in their homes and not addressing that order and getting into a rhythm, a routine. They watch the firefight, they see the super scoopers, they see the helicopters, they start to get lulled into a sense of we got this. And the fire crews have been working super hard to keep this line. But today is one of those days. Yep. Today is the kind of day that if a spark gets in that grass, and yep. everybody knows how bone dry that grass is yep. out there, boy, it can flare right up. And then this year we've had, uh, with the weather pattern that happened earlier in the spring, there's a bumper crop of grass all around Northern California, they put out a warning for firefighters about the amount of grass that's there and it's completely bone dry. So yes, literally it just takes one little ember to cross the line in an area that's not, um, that's not that great to, uh, for the fire to start and then rapidly spread if people can't get a handle on it right after it starts. Great, so if you're home right now thinking or if you have a friend out there in Ruth and you're thinking, are these guys for real? It's Sunday morning. Are they really trying to say that th things could go wrong today in Ruth? The answer is yes. On a red flag day, that's when Mother Nature takes the upper hand. Yes. And we won't know until this passes yep. after the firefight. And we do have our helicopters. We do have our, our airships. But if the wind's super strong, they might not be able to fly at any exactly. given time. And that red flag warning is uh, from today through noon tomorrow. So the winds will... The winds in the dry RHs will continue overnight and then into the morning and then start uh, slackening off tomorrow afternoon. Copy that. And then so some folks might say, okay, how's Post Mountain looking? The wind's blowing away another day, but we could get some activity around the Forest Glen area. Yep. The other area, the other area of concern is right here. We have fire coming down that we've been trying to tie into the road, but as those strong winds surface and hit the 36 corridor, they could speed up in those little pinch points where the canyons get super tight. And then this, the same, there's potential for a fire to spot out. There's uh, two fire scars, the picket from 2015 and the flume, which is not on the map, from 1987. And those fuels are not um, barriers to fire spread. They will accelerate fire spread uh, along that 36 corridor. So this is the second area of concern that we have right now. With the wind direction coming from the northeast, 
Post Mountain is not um, directly threatened, but since there are values and structures there, it's always something that's on our radar. And in case we have fire cross 36 or get down there, this is an area of uh, focus concern as, long as, as well as Forest Glen. Excellent, and our number one concern is always public and firefighter safety. So when you hear the sincerity and the urgency in our voice today, it's because we do have concern. We have concern for you, the residents who haven't left Ruth, and we have concern for our firefighters. And that's our highest priorities. Of course, we want to save homes, we want to protect infrastructure, we want to keep the fire out of the power corridors and all that stuff, but your life and our firefighter's life are the highest priority. Now, Chris, we're going to go ahead and let you get back to work because Perfect. you'll be staying on it today as yep. people check the weather and you work with Brooke, our incident meteorologist. Yep. Thank you so much. We appreciate that expertise. And then we're going to bring in Jeremy Michael, who's going to give the folks another reason why to leave Ruth, that air is going to be hazardous to breathe, right? When that light smoke production kicks in here. Yep. That's going to be bad to have in your lungs. I'll let Jeremy talk about that. Thanks, Chris. Appreciate Perfect. it. Thank you. And Chris heads back to his work. Remember, he's the fire behavior analyst, takes a lot of training to get in that position. He came up to the ranks of a firefighter, worked with a tool, worked with a pack and a crew and all that. It takes a lot to get to become the F-band is what we call it, F-B-A-N, fire behavior analyst. And now our air resource advisor, ARA, Jeremy Michael. He's been only on the fire a couple days now, but it doesn't take a genius to figure out today is going to be a bad air day, right, Jeremy? Yeah, ab absolutely. So, uh, you know, I, I want to go through a few things, and, and maybe let's go through a scenario together. So let's say you don't evacuate and, or you wait too late. What could you be you know, experiencing? Well, how many videos have you seen when people try to evacuate or it's too late and you can't see it all? You're leaving in your vehicle, you're going down the road that you know you've went down a thousand times, but visibility is zero. You can't even see to the front of the, the car. So you have that. So what if a tree's in the road? You're not gonna have the stoppage time and you're probably trying to get out of the way really quick well, if that tree is in the road, that's a hazard. Um, so that's, that's a big one right there. Let's go into the fact that uh, you're breathing. Uh, it doesn't matter how good your circulator is in your car. When we're talking about these levels of smoke and this hazardous of air, it's going to come into your car. Your eyes are going to be burning. If you have contacts, that's going to be really awful. Um, your throat's going to be burning. You're going to be coughing. Um, there's significant health impacts. And if you're vulnerable, it can induce even life-threatening um, symptoms. Uh, as well as when you're trying to drive and exit these areas. If you choose to stay, you could be in prolonged hazardous air um, for days. And what that does is it has a cumulative effect and it gets deep inside your lung. Because what we're talking about is particle sizes that are so small, they don't get captured in the airwaves or our, our body's self um, you know, protection to, to catch those particles. They go deep into the lungs and they can sit there and, and have problems, especially if you have heart disease, um, respiratory issues, um, if you're, uh, you know, have diabetes or any other, uh, you know, things that make you more susceptible to smoke, you can have significant impacts. And uh, the longer you're in that smoke, the worse. So we don't always just evacuate from fire. Sometimes, especially in this part of the country um, where smoke can sit for days, we actually do evacuations for smoke, especially if you're, you're vulnerable. I, yeah, that's a really good point, Jeremy. I don't think a lot of people really understand because we, we do get kind of used to the conditions around us. Yeah. And, the, and it's been clearing out. The other day, we had incredible air in Ruth, right? Because yeah. the wind shifted out of the south-southwest. Boy, this, the reservoir was beautiful. The residents were watching the scoopers. Yep. They were watching the helicopters. Everything's good again. You get lulled into, okay, the firefight's going well. Well, that air the other day went all the way over Reading, and now it's going to come all over Ruth. Yeah. So it's, it's not so much that it's doom and gloom. It's, it's our job to make sure you understand and have informed risk so you know what the risks are we're worried about spot fires in the valley lighting up quick and causing a firefight we're worried about that tiny particulate the 2.5 yep. you shouldn't even be exercising in that stuff let alone breathing and exactly. it looks like we've got a question from aubrey coming in from our online audience aubrey yeah folks out there would like to know what issue of folks leaving ruth as far as there are only one route and traffic relative to fire equipment Right, so I, to, to translate that, it's, Ruth is a one-way in, one-way out type of situation. That is a huge and terrible watch out for firefighters. That is why there are evacuation orders for Ruth. We don't just do it to inconvenience you when we're doing our operations and you say, look, they got it, I should stay in my home. It's because of this one-way in, mm -hmm. one-way out. When we start getting that log jam, we've already lost a 63-year-old female firefighter on this fire. She died in her engine, in a smoky environment, trying to do a turnaround. Mm -hmm. 
And as Jeremy explained, that's a huge watch out because now your adrenaline's pumping. Yeah. You're in survival mode. You yep. realize you didn't plan well. Yep. You realize it's now flight and fright. Yep. We don't make good decisions yeah, then. Exactly. And it's one thing when you can actually see and you know the road, but when you can't see that tree that's down, that, that engine that may be there trying to protect structures, you might not see that. And another thing I want to go back to with the prolonged exposure to the smoke, we have seen this in the Pacific Northwest, carbon monoxide. You know, the silent killer, when you have days and days and days of very dense smoke, like what we can see down here in these low valleys, these sheltered valleys, you can have what actually is just like when you hear about in a house, you know, and, and you have the structure firefighters go in and you see people that have passed out or have passed away, you can actually have carbon monoxide. And what carbon monoxide does is under prolonged exposure, especially if you're at risk, you can, uh, you can have vomiting, dizziness, headaches, you can also become delusional, lose your judgment. So then again, if you choose to stay in this smoke, you're not only dealing with the fire, you're not only dealing with the low visibility, the health hazards from the actually particulates going deep into your lungs, but also now your decision making could be really in inhibited because of this carbon monoxide that really doesn't always get you know a lot of air time because there's just so many hazards with a fire. I know back in uh, 2014, I think in Montana, they put carbon monoxide monitors on us as a part of the human uh, health uh, mm -hmm. firefighter lab and boy every single firefighter is out there with carbon monoxide around it's not good for us yep. it's certainly not good for you if we have any other questions we'll go ahead and address them here please neighbors help neighbors get this word out ruth is under a very stressful situation today we believe that the fire lines will hold but we could have spotting over those fire lines into the grass module that's the big concern please if you're there head out Take a couple days and go away, go to the coast, go somewhere else. We think it's going to be about 48 hours or so before the smoke uh, maybe resolves down. And then where, where do they find this online? How, how, how do they look for the smoke report? Yeah, so the smoke report, it's in a number of locations. You'll see it on the Mendocino National Forest Facebook. You'll see it on our, our page, uh, pages that the Alaska team is putting out. You'll see it over on the trap lines or those informational posts. Uh, you can Google these smoke outlooks. Um, and if you see that, and if you have questions or concern, my email is on the smoke outlooks, or you can always call your PIOs. And another thing too, with the kind of the longer term outlook, unfortunately, you know, the, the smoke could get better in this area as the winds start to shift away. But uh, as Brooke uh, Tabor, the incident meteorologist was saying, we have a strong high pressure that's gonna be moving into the area. And what that does is that can bring a lid. So if we get a lot of increased fire activity, or like we have a new start, the glass fire down in Napa, that, that region, and we get all of this smoke, when that high pressure builds in, it squashes it all down. So you can actually, we could be moving into a prolonged regional wide uh, deterioration or, or impactful smoke uh, as we go into the week. And that cap is always a mixed blessing, right? It often reduces fire behavior so we can get exactly. back on the offensive and get right up and try to figure out if we lost anything, yep. slop overs, little areas that bulge, whatever you want to call it. But that cap can Boy, that, that is one of the hardest yep. and points of the fire when it gets stagnant like that and just smoky. Yep, and that's where you're in, you know, your, the air quality concerns are increasing. And if you're in a, you know, you're living near the fire and you're starting to have those visibility to where you can only see, you know, 100 feet, 300 feet, a quarter mile, that's where that carbon monoxide can actually creep up on you uh, when you start having those, those prolonged smoke exposures. Great, so just a reminder, when you are evacuating pills, pets, papers, those type of things, you load them up, you head out, I know you've had a long time to think about it, but today's the day. We have another question from Aubrey. Yeah, the folks online are interested to know, um, are the firefighters okay in the smoke? Okay, so this is a career where you sacrifice your well-being for the benefit of others. There's no other way to put it. Day in and day out, across this nation, fire crews are sacrificing their lungs. They're right up in that 2.5. They're right up yep. in the black carbon. They're right up in the carbon monoxide. There's no way to wear a respirator. Yep. There's no way to get around that. It's a national duty. It's a call to action. It's a way of preserving public and firefighter safety and houses and infrastructure. So uh, they do the best they can, but it takes a, a wear and tear. And, and Jeremy? And, yeah, and you know that's, that's another reason why we're here. So we focus so much on our communities, but we're also here for firefighter safety. And we'll work with uh, the planning sections, the operations folks, and what we'll do is we'll provide them with uh, potential mitigations you know, the, some of those mitigations are, say, uh, a crew's working in heavy smoke, we can rotate those out, get them some nice air. We have sleeper trailers with HEPA filters. You know, we do what we can uh, to take care of our firefighters, understanding, though, there's still a necessary and there's a risk that, that, that does occur with any of these fires. 
we certainly do appreciate that concern. The best way you can support the firefighters is put up thank you banners, uh, donate to the Wildland Firefighter Foundation. If any firefighters hurt, the first thing that foundation does, contact their family and provide immediate financial support. And then you can also mail stamp postcards to our instant command post. Go ahead and leave your comments here. We're gonna go ahead and close it out because we gotta get Jeremy back to the forecast. We're gonna head out to the field Please keep checking the YouTube videos. There's all sorts of B-roll, we call it, or exclusive behind the fire line videos on YouTube. We know folks are starting to watch it more and more, but you can see everything from field reports off the 36 road. You can see what the closures look like. You can see the very large air tanker retardant drops. You can see crews working, dozers working. Stay tuned, stay informed. We're here to serve you. Make sure you leave your questions and thanks so much for being part of the Green Pants Nation. Big critical fire weather day. Let's get through it together. Thanks.